Friends, it is good to be back with you today after a month since the last homily. For those of you who heard the homily on prayer and forgiveness and reparation, this card was the prayer we prayed at the end. Uh, these cards are now available here today. If you'd like to take it home with you and pray this prayer on your own, you may grab a card on the way out at the entrances to the church this prayer for forgiveness and reparation. So many of you know me, I am Father Jim Lowe, uh, the Vocations Director of the Companions of the Cross. And as the Vocations Director of a community or even uh, diocesan vocation directors, one of our primary responsibilities is helping men discern their specific call. What is God calling these men to be, to become in their lives? The priesthood, single vocation, or marriage. But I try to remind these men that, and I remind you as well here today who are trying to discern God's will in your own lives, even if you already have a specific vocation chosen, that it's important for us to remember that before we discern God's specific will, we have to be aware of the fact that there is this universal call to holiness. All of us, every single person that exists, is called by God to be holy, to be a saint, to be in love with him, to be like him. And it's important that we realize that this universal call to holiness is something that requires us to look at within ourselves and choose to find through prayer, reflection, through this type of experience today of being at Mass, homilies. And we hear from St. Augustine in his Confessions, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. This restlessness of our hearts is what keeps us coming back, keeps us coming to the Lord, keeps us coming to the Mass, to the Eucharist, to the Word of God. We have been created with restless hearts. And we also hear in Psalm 63, Sunday morning prayer in the Divine Office, O God, you are my God. For you I long, for you my soul is thirsting, my body pines for you like a dry, weary land without water. This is a pretty powerful image. Our souls are thirsty, our hearts are thirsty for the Lord. When I used to live in Houston, Texas, I remember one year they had a, a, a drought, a terrible drought, one of the worst they had had in years. And the ground around the seminary became cracked like a desert. There were like about one inch cracks because it became so dry. And the trees actually died. These 200 year old trees died that summer because they didn't get any water. They were parched, they were thirsty, and they had to be cut down. We've all been created with this hunger, this thirst for God. And in today's gospel, we, he, we see this example. Jesus goes to the well, and he sa it says that he's tired and he sits down. First thing we recognize is, why didn't he right away go and take a drink? If he was thirsty, he didn't. He waited at the well. And he waited until the woman, the Samaritan woman, came to him. And when she arrived and met Jesus, he asked for a drink. And this is where this conversation began. Again, she didn't give him a drink, but he turned it around. And he pointed out the thirst of the woman. This thirst that she had, this thirst that she had for him. But it began with his thirst. Jesus was not thirsty for water. Jesus was not thirsty to get a drink from the well. Jesus was thirsty for this woman's heart, 
for a conversion in her heart. He was thirsty for her to desire and want to thirst for him. Jesus thirsts for the conversion of our souls. He thirsts for my heart, for your heart. He thirsts for us. He desires that we come to him like the woman at the well, thirsty for life-giving water that only he can provide. We receive this life-giving water first in baptism, most of us as infants. But this life-giving water isn't just given to us at that moment. He continues to draw us to himself. He continues to sustain us, and especially through the sacraments, through reconciliation, through the Eucharist. He wants to continue to draw us to himself. And he says in the gospel today, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, referring to the water from the well. But whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Jesus is making it very clear both to the woman and to us, that the things of life that we're turning to to fill this hunger in us, the created things, chocolate cake, I like chocolate cake, movies, I love movies, things aren't bad, but when we're using these things to replace the hunger for God, well, they become idols, they become unsatisfactory to us and hopefully eventually we're led back to the true source Jesus the sacraments the Eucharist the Word of God the Holy Spirit given to us whenever we come hungry and thirsty so what does Jesus thirst for he thirsts for our hearts he thirsts for our conversion like the woman at the well he wants us to turn away from these things in the world and turn to him. It's important to note that the woman who came to him at the well came to him, and when he asked her the question about where her husband was, she said, I don't have a husband. And he said, yes, because you're on your sixth, and he's not your husband. He was beginning to reveal to her her sin, but not in a way that was condemning her, or trying to make her feel shame, but in a way that was drawing her to a conversion to want to respond to him, his mercy, his love, his grace. Just like you and I should not be shameful of the things that we've turned to in life, but we should have a healthy guilt that turns us back to Jesus, that makes us remember that he is the only source, the only one who's truly going to fulfill this thirst that we have. Jesus pointed to her sin to bring her to a place of hunger and thirst for him. And then we hear in the gospel, the woman left her water jar and went into the town and said to the people, come, see the man who told me everything I have done. Could he possibly be the Christ? It's important to note that she left the water jar. She didn't need the water from that well anymore because she encountered Jesus and recognized that he was the Messiah, that he was the Savior, that he was the one that has been promised to come and save us. And she wasn't thirsty anymore because he satisfied her thirst with himself, with his very presence. But it didn't end there. What did she do next? She went in and told people about him. She testified to who Jesus is, and more people came to him. And eventually we hear that they no longer believed because of what she told them, but they believed because of what they heard themselves and believed on their own. I wasn't always living as a priest. At times in my life, I was wandering away from the Lord at one point as a young adult, around 26 or so, I had an experience like this, where I was driving my little shiny red Camaro with T-tops and Bose speakers that I thought was going to make me happy, but they were just putting me more in debt. 
I thought, you know, this was, this was my life. But I heard a little voice whisper to me one day when I was on my way to my home parish, turn into the National Shrine of the Little Flower. Never had been there before, first time. The Lord was calling me to him, and I responded, and I went in. And when I went in and received him in the Eucharist, received him in the precious blood, I was filled with this water, this life-giving water, this Holy Spirit. And my life began to change. And I started walking away from that other way of life and walking towards Jesus. You see, this in my life and in the woman at the well and in your lives is a response to Jesus' thirst for our souls. We have it in the sanctuary behind me, above the sanctuary. It says, I thirst for you. You all know this very well here at Our Lady of Good Counsel. You can even find the entire message on the website. But these words are at the heart of today's gospel. It's this mystery of how much Jesus thirsts for us, how much he wants us to thirst for him to thirst for him like a dry, weary land without water so that we won't die like those trees down in Houston and have to be cut down, but so that we can be watered and be given life, abundant life in him. So I'm just going to read a short, uh, shorter excerpt of this uh, reflection, this meditation of Mother Teresa, I Thirst. You will be hearing it again uh, and have heard it before. But it's a very, these are very powerful words. She speaks Jesus' words to us. And if you'd like to read along, you may. Or you can just close your eyes and hear the words directly from the Lord himself. Just avoid the temptation to fall asleep, okay? So these are, this is the question the Lord has for us. Do you thirst for love? Come to me, all you who thirst. I will satisfy you and fill you. Do you thirst to be cherished? I cherish you more than you can imagine, to the point of dying on a cross for you. I thirst for you. Yes, that is the only way to even begin to describe my love for you. I thirst for you. I thirst to love you and to be loved by you. That is how precious you are to me. I thirst for you. Come to me, and I will fill your heart and heal your wounds. I will make you a new creation and give you peace even in all your trials. I thirst for you. You must never doubt my mercy, my acceptance of you, my desire to forgive, my longing to bless you and live my life in you. I thirst for you. If you feel unimportant in the eyes of the world, that matters not at all. For me, there is no one more important in the entire world than you. I thirst for you. Open to me. Come to me. Thirst for me. Give me your life, and I will prove to you how important you are to my heart. Don't you realize that my Father already has a perfect plan to transform your life, beginning from this moment? Trust in me. Ask me every day to enter and take charge of your life, and I will. I promise you before my Father in heaven that I will work miracles in your life. Why would I do this? Because I thirst for you. All I ask is that you entrust yourself to me completely. I will do all the rest. Even now, I behold the place my Father has prepared for you in my kingdom. Remember that you are a pilgrim in this life on a journey home. Sin can never satisfy you or bring the peace you seek. All that you have sought outside of me has only left you more empty. 
So do not cling to the things of this life. Above all, do not run from me when you fall. Come to me without delay. When you give me your sins, you give me the joy of being your Savior. There is nothing I cannot forgive and heal. So come now and unburden your soul. I thirst. Yes, I thirst for you. I stand at the door of your heart and call. Open to me, for I thirst for you. This meditation of Mother Teresa was inspired after she read Revelation 3.20. Revelation 3.20 is Jesus knocking at the door of our hearts. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, then I will enter his house and dine with him and he with me. Friends, Jesus is always knocking at the door of our heart, including today. He's standing here asking us to open ourselves up even more to him than we already have, or maybe for some of us even for the first time. So I invite you to pray a prayer with me, a prayer to recommit to opening the door of your heart to allow Jesus to either for the first time be the center of your life or once again to recommit to him being the center of your life. And if you're not prepared to pray this prayer today, that's okay. It can be found online, either at Catholic Christian Outreach website or on the Our Lady of Good Counsel website. We'll make it available as well. So I invite you now, if you wish, you can read along and pray the prayer together to recommit to allow Jesus to be the center of our lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Father, I believe that you know me and love me. I have not always chosen to love you and have broken my relationship with you through my sins. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, who proved your love for me on the cross. Lord Jesus, I open the door of my heart and I invite you to be at the center of my life to be my Savior and my Lord. Direct me by your Holy Spirit and help me to live the gospel with my whole life. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.